There we go. Interesting. All right. Well, uh, here we are. Welcome, everyone. Uh, Welcome to the CIDA Investor uh, Webinar. We're going to start rebranding these for particularly for CIDA as a, the CIDA Weekly Webcast. Uh, we're joined again, as always, by Mr. Gary Campbell, CEO of CIDA Corp. Uh, they're a leader, uh, for those of you who don't know, in innovative technology solutions. They're the creators of the revolutionary CIDA Comms and now CIDA Cares and CIDA Air. Uh, the ticker, of course, is CYCA. Before I turn it over, Gary, just note everyone at the bottom of your screen, there's a Q&A button. Feel free to click on it at any time. Type your questions in. Gary will try to address as many of those as possible before we finish. Uh, with that said, it's all yours, Gary. Take it away. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here uh, this morning or afternoon, uh, depending where you are. Um, first, I like to say, uh, as some of you who attend these probably are noticing, I'm in uh, somewhat casual attire um, and uh, in a different location. The uh, the famous uh, CIDA studios here in uh, in Las Vegas are undergoing renovations today. So uh, I am broadcasting from a little bit of a different location. And uh, uh, I only had my casual attire along. And it's probably a good way to start this long weekend anyway. So thanks for being here. And uh, without further ado, uh, Mike, uh, there you go. So as uh, some of you know, um, we really uh, develop uh, communications technologies, and, and you know it's been a forte of ours for a while. Uh, we brought several technologies together, and the the key for us is both developing the technology and then bringing it to market. So we're really excited. We've got uh, two of our main technologies are coming to market concurrently they're connected and if you could go to the next uh, slide please um there we go um yeah so one of our technologies is city cares we've talked about it coming along what city cares does provide is a complete safety and security system for schools but it works along the lines of our CITICOM system, whereby we use the CITICOM system to connect police officers in the field with uh, their home base department, their real time crime centers. And basically, that capability of allowing the officers in the field to be immediately connected and also to participate with their department in any emergency, any situation that comes up, started the discussion about how could we develop a product that the sheriffs or police departments could utilize in the schools that would provide the same level of situational awareness and connectivity as our city comms product does. So we've been working on this for many months now and the city cares project has now come together. We are ready to start going into the field with it. Uh, the technology allows any administrator, teacher, literally anybody in a school setting that has our City Cares app downloaded into their phone to immediately activate that application, push one SOS button on the phone, and immediately send out an alert to every first responder connected to the system and also to the other people within the school setting who have the app. So when that notice goes out, every first responder receives it on their phone or laptop. Um, the first first responder to engage that icon will be immediately connected both video and audio to the person that sent that alert. And that allows for the very first time to have first responders seeing exactly what the teachers, administrators in that school setting are seeing and what caused them to send that SOS. So in the situation of a shooter or somebody suspicious or somebody with a weapon, for the very first time, those first responders, everybody on the CARES network, including, including all the teachers, administrators, will be able to visually and audioly see exactly what that phone or tablet is seeing. So that form of communication, uh, we call it, you know, a, a type of communication that really represents a notice and connectivity, you know, within a minute. 
and basically it's literally going to happen within seconds. This is happening within three to five seconds, depending how quickly people respond. So this this capability is what we're now calling the golden minute, which is a uh, play on the fact that, you know, they have the golden hour in emergency situations where if you're providing uh, medical care, if you can get to them within an hour, it changes the whole dynamic. Well, our technology getting to literally getting complete situational awareness within within a minute or within seconds changes the whole dynamic. And suddenly, with this kind of connectivity, police officers or emergency people attending on any, any school emergency situation will now have multiple sources of information. So every other person in the school with the app in their phone, if they see something, they can also connect. So there can be one, two, multiple streams showing everything that's being seen in that school. And for the first time, and before the officers are, you know, going into a school setting, they're going to know exactly what they're facing. So it's a completely different situation. It works certainly in connection with every other safety system that's in the school. Um, and we, you know, we're really excited about how we're going to be able to change the dynamic in the discussion. So, and the key person behind CityCares, next slide, please, Mike. Mike, there you go, it's Natalia Sokolova. So uh, a lot of you know, Natalia uh, came into the company probably six, eight months ago um, to really become you know, my strong right hand in everything we're doing here. Um, she's got you know, a tremendous background. She has um, been somebody I've known for a decade or more. And she's also been associated with the company uh, since almost a decade as well. So we've done a number of specific things within CITA together. And in this situation, while we split out some of our operating team to go to Reticulate Micro to, to do that, Natalia agreed that, you know, she would uh, come in with me in CITA and, and start operating directly within the confines of CITA rather than from the outside through her family office side and her investment side and general advisor side. So she's she's been with us for quite a while now and she's made an incredible difference within the company. Uh, from my point of view, you know, I couldn't I couldn't have someone stronger and more talented to work with. So, you know, this this is very exciting. Additionally, um, she has remarkable organizational skills, which, you know, a lot of you have suggested that I have very few. Uh, so from my point of view, she makes my life much easier. And, you know, she's really changed the whole dynamic for CIDA. Uh, generally, and also very, very specifically with care. So in addition to everything else she does, uh, she's she's personally and from a mother's point of view, um, taken taken over the CARES project and is, is designing it so that we can have national outreach with regard to this. And the point being that uh, this is something she she believes in directly. She has two school age children that uh, she you know is very concerned about what happens within their school environment. So from a personal perspective, and also a a caring about what's what's happening in this country. So Natalia will be launching the CARES initiative for us. She'll be. Um, in addition to everything else, she's a keynote speaker at uh, various events around the country. I think Thursday coming up, she'll be given a keynote speech in San Francisco, and she'll have some interesting things to talk about regarding our our CARES initiative and how we can how we can add a new layer of safety and security to children in this country, and hopefully. Um, prevent and uh, alleviate some of the problems we've all been experiencing. So um, that will be very, very exciting. Uh, I see we're all right. I'm finished with that subject. <laughs> all right, CIDA Air, CIDA Air. Uh, we have, uh, 
one thing that we talked a little bit about last week, um, I've, uh, I haven't uh, particularly explained exactly what Windhover Labs is, and Sita, Sita and Windover have have entered into our our cooperation and partnership agreement. Uh, we've been uh, things have been developing really really quickly. Um, but I got the opportunity to attend at their development facility um, down south of Houston a few weeks ago, um, connected to the, you know, the Houston uh, Space Center there. And it's it's just a remarkable place for for somebody like me, who's kind of a technology freak. It was like it was paradise. It, it was it was something that uh I could only imagine. So, you know, here's kind of a brief summary that uh, they provided to me. Um, we, you know, we've seen a few of the things, but this is basically some of the things they're doing. And all of these things will be things that Sita Air will be partnering with them on um, at multiple levels. We haven't quite designed how we're going to be able to do this because as you can see um, they're literally you know designing and building uh, two two drones and you know that uh, uh, we've we've shown a slide of that a little bit they're also working on it, it yeah go can you go back man? thanks thanks okay they're also um, work working on a, a project with a with a with a drone or a company that's going to be flying at Mach 10, which is insane when you think about that. Um, that's hard to believe, but it's happening, and that's one of the one of the other projects they're working on. They have ongoing projects where they're working on various satellite projects. Um, they're also a direct. Uh, uh, NASA Prime on a space flight and then also on phase two and phase three projects. So basically, you know, when I met them, they were talking to me about a, a avionics package. They had a command and control system that could work with um, our, uh, our IGAN or our CITICOMS product and the connectivity on that. But uh, Voyager was having problems that week and uh, you know, they said they were with NASA and I was asking them, well, do you have anything to do with that? And they literally went into a long explanation of what exactly they did to try to get Voyager working again and, and the fact that it was successful. And then a few weeks later, the media reported exactly what they told me. So literally, you know, <laughs> they're, they're doing some remarkably um bleeding edge work they're also uh doing a rover software package and i could be wrong but i think that's a lunar rover package they're working on and uh, if we could go to the next uh, slide mike please so as you see there's there's just some tremendous background uh with space research and space technologies which is really what their forte is taking those brilliant technologies that they've been part of developing and bringing them to the drone and, and you know, small avionics space, but at a level of professionalism and uh, complexity I've never seen anywhere else. So, you know, Matt and his team there and uh, Fred, you'll be uh, learning a lot more about them as uh, we, uh, we, formally bring them on board and that'll be getting announced over the next few weeks and the, the nat exact nature of the products. This is, uh, as I said earlier, um, these are, these are two um, particular proprietary drones that they're designing and building under development. Um, you know, they're, they're beyond the, the, design stage, they've actually uh, reached the build stage and I was able to see them and interact with the, uh, uh, I guess, I guess the uh, aviation design engineers that are building them, which was also a very, <laughs> very, very exciting uh, thing and pieces. And the, the basic design of certainly the Dragonfly 
which has a two and a half hour flight time, um, 10 pound payload capacity, and a pricing that puts it way under any comparable drones is something that is going to have a tremendous, tremendous uh, presence in the US market again. Um, it's what we call uh, blue or blue force. It's all designed with all the boards, all the avionics, all the all the aspects of it are all American made, and there is no you know no connectivity to any any Chinese product. So again, this is something that will be very very appealing to the first responders, uh, military, government agencies really anywhere where they want to be sure that the drone is not reporting to uh, anybody other than the people it's supposed to be reporting to. So that again is uh, going to be very exciting. And from a city air perspective, um, the the pieces that are coming together are, are very big, very capable. You know, we've been all been working together here in the background for over a year now to put the conceptual pieces together. And only in the last you know few months had um, did we have the framework design. So there'll be a lot more to say about that as we um, determine exactly what the partnering agreement is gonna look like. We have the general partnering agreement in place. And from here, it's designing the specifics of how, how what, and where, and the team we're putting together in SIDA Air is, um, making some moves in that regard. So next, please, Mike. All right, can't can't uh, not talk about Citicoms. Again, the uh, the sales and marketing programs there have been designed. Again, uh, Natalia has you know taken charge of all sales and marketing. Uh, putting the teams together to bring bring that to fruition. And so materials are being designed, uh, manuals, uh, video training situations, um, the whole demonstration scenario. So uh, all of those pieces have been coming together. As a lot of you probably have noticed, the, uh, the website has changed. And we we broke the company down into the various elements that uh, we're going to be going forward with. So, Citicoms basically becomes the whole area, the sales funnel, if you want to call it that, that first responders uh, can respond to, can get a demonstration of a product, can speak to one of our salespeople, and the the formality of the sales and marketing process will really begin to start hitting uh, after this long weekend. So Natalia has uh, very, very major outlines of how we're going to do that. And we're all excited to have it coming together. Um, from a from an interesting perspective, the the part of the outreach that we've been doing with uh, CITICOMS and, and to a certain extent CITICARES has been really starting um, to tell the marketplace, tell the first responders, tell these people what the product is, uh, how it works, you know, who, who our existing clients are from a reference point of view. So putting that whole outreach project together has, um, has been going very, very well. We're literally, uh, we've started getting um, requests for demonstrations from, from police departments here this week, which is what everything was designed for. So, so the outreach system will go into high gear starting next week and all of the testing of it has worked really well. So there's a whole team together now to show and demonstrate and put these systems in the hands of first responders. And then again, that putting that technology into their hands also is part and parcel of the whole CITA CARES outreach, which the CITICOMS will support from a first responder side. It's uh, CITICOMS, of course, is also a full uh, incident management or incident command system. So they can communicate with each other. They can store the information. They can pass it around. So, you know, think of it as, uh, you know, a customer relationship management system, but a big one for 
first responders to utilize for everything they do. And a lot of that side of the house uh, really supports the primary focus, which has been to ensure that the streaming from drones and pole cams and other video devices is able to be shared among all all officers. So that's been an easy implement for us. But now everybody is starting to realize the complete capabilities of the system. It's also secure. The encryption is something that nobody can crack at this point. And uh, we, you know, we give security and ability to share all this information among all first responders in any situation they want to use it for. So we're expecting it to become a foundational piece of first responder technology. And, you know, to that end, um, our connectivity with FirstNet, AT&T, um, is also looking at just that aspect of how foundational the technology is for all first responders. And I think we're going to have some exciting conversations about that relationship in the near future. So that's come together very well for us. And uh, I think uh, the, you know, the, uh, the last piece here that's connected with this and the getting the information out is basically um we've we've added a new piece which people are going to start seeing uh, generally it'll be going out sunday nights this week it will go out monday night a lot of people have, have suggested that you know we we put the um what called i guess they're called thought leader articles um you know natalia and i with the assistance of uh, the technology people uh, um put put uh, thought pieces together on all the things we're talking about, comms, cares, uh, there'll be some on city air. And basically, um, you know, they're short reads. They talk about the things that we talk about. And, you know, we're trying to put out um, information about everything we're doing, but generally so that, you know, our potential clients and the marketplace can can think about, you know, how these things are working. So those have been going out to the set of corporate blogs on the website. And, you know, then they've been uh, shared around through various uh, social media platforms. But um, a lot of the, a lot of our uh, shareholders had requested that we incorporate them uh, in direct uh, email form to them so they could consume them more easily. So um, that that basically led us to the thought of a CIDA newsletter, which will um, will supplement uh, these, these blogs that we're doing. So that'll be coming out every week. There'll be some new thoughts in there. Um, there'll be easy access to the articles and also some other things that we share among ourselves uh, stories and pieces that we find really interesting. So hopefully everybody enjoys that. And, uh, you know, there'll be a way to, uh, uh, to consume it. So again, let us know uh, through that piece, how you feel about it. Uh, we get a lot of great input from our shareholders or people that follow us. Um, we're getting a lot of leads now. And, you know, anytime you see something that looks interesting from anywhere in the world, please feel free to pass it on because it's, uh, you know, you wouldn't believe how many of the interesting things we get come, come from people that are sending them to us and saying, you know, would this work in this situation? What do you think about this? So please uh, feel free to interact with us. And uh, I think uh, that's this point, uh, Mike, why don't we... Throw it open for questions or great. Yep, we got a few. Let's get a starter here. The first one is uh, he asks, How do you isolate the initial emergency response from being overloaded with multiple individuals with the app responding at the same time? Assuming he's referring to CARES, maybe. Yeah, CARES. Well, CARES has the same capability. Um, the our system is designed for multiple, multiple users at the same time. So I think. Uh, we used to have an image in our deck of uh, at one point, I believe there were 50, 50 different people responding on the on the screen that, you know, that you can expand the ones you want to look at. But it uh, it takes a lot of people responding at the same time. We there the way we say it right now, there is there isn't an upside limit. If it's 100, if it's a thousand, it'll still incorporate them. 
So the point is, but the you know the primary primary people will control uh, the interaction. Um, the primary person on the first responder side will control you know how what kind of access the other people do you can have them just listening you can have them listening watching you can have them able to participate or you know if if he wants only his let's say it's a SWAT unit coming in he'll just designate all of the SWAT people as primaries and then the other people you know can watch and see and get the notices but they won't be able to communicate with each other interfere etc so it's really designed brilliantly as a complete incident command system. The idea originally originated and was um, later, it originated on 9-11 when everything was just chaos. FEMA then described uh, how the system should work. And, uh, you know, our team uh, designed it based upon that. And the, the genius of it is it's now really the only system that we know of that does all those things in an emergency and allows them to coordinate and move these things that way. So th the answer is it's designed to take as many people as need to be there, but there there is control from the first responder side and how, how they all interact. Mike, any more questions, Mike? Are you there? Boy. My apologies, I had the mute on. Okay, yep, I just read one to you, but I didn't realize you can hear me. Okay, uh, next question is, what is the timeline on having CARES ready to offer to schools? And have you had any preliminary discussions with any schools or other related entities about offering it uh, to any districts thus far? Um, well, Natalia, Natalia is in those discussion at this point. I think we have four, um, four perhaps five um, schools in in different school districts um, that we'll be doing implementations with over the next uh, few weeks. And those implementations will allow us to put it into some different settings. There are different types of schools, different areas. And yes, we we have a lot of interest from that side. And um, we want to get it into our betas first. So we'll do it that way. And so far, everybody we presented it to, I'd have to say anybody in those settings is incredibly interested, including um, some very, very major players in the uh, safety and security space. There are some large corporations that are rolling up um, pieces of this space. It's, it's really become... Um, from an ad hoc collection of pieces and technologies that you know were designed to protect schools, it has become a whole uh, industry segment unto itself, and that is being recognized by major players who are saying, you know, we want to be the purveyor of all the appropriate technologies into this space. In other words, become a sole source supplier of of multiple technologies that create you know, safety and security in schools and in institutions and in all kinds of places, malls, sporting events, you know, there's a whole range of, of capabilities here going above and beyond schools, but primarily the, the, the key focus here of everybody is to how do we provide the best protection we can to our children in a school setting and how how do we ensure that you know from a parent point of view it it's effective and it works and that you know we're providing the best level of safety so a lot of study is being done on that um you know a couple of the one of the blog pieces that we put out was directed at just that subject and a lot of the, you know one of the key things is you know how immediate is the system how immediate is it? What, you know, what do the people in the school have to do? What kind of training do they need to have? How does it relate to, you know, their world experiences in an emergency? Um, you know, you people who aren't properly trained don't react well. So, you know, again, those are the kind of things that 
we find that the city cares because it's an app, because it's something everybody's very, very familiar with these days. There's a lot of comfort with it. And hopefully in the emergency situation, that that makes it more effective. Great. Thanks, Gary. Uh, all right. Next question. Uh, this person asks, the deal with Fizz UAS to create SID Air for drone systems is intriguing. Can you provide more details on its applications and potential market size? Sure. Um, Fizz is probably one of the best marketers uh, of drones to the government, military, uh, not so much hard military, but let's let's say quasi-military, border patrol, that type of thing uh, that we know. Uh, Chris Camilio in Fizz has literally been with uh, working with CIDA, working with our developers, marketing CIDA products for oh, at least four or five years now. They were our first reseller on the super compression technology. Uh, we've been co-selling IDAN with them um, to their drone clients. So very, very close relationship. Um, again, it we we both work together. So on the on the Camara Seeker project, they're they're the marketing arm of the seeker and we're we're a you know, we're a technology developer in partnership with a seeker. That whole project has changed dramatically. So uh, Fizz and Sita are working together in, to develop exactly, you know, what, what that project looks like. Um, the other connecting piece there is Windover uh, came to us regarding their command and control avionics package um, and a discussion about putting it in that. So again, that brings Windover in. But uh, they, you know, they have incredible depth in the marketing and sales of drones. Um, they have, you know, a very large base. They do a lot of DGI work. Um, one of the things we're partnering with them on is developing a CIDA based system that allows us to uh, fly a DGI drone directly through the IGAN or the CIDACOMS product and provide all the metadata to do various calculations of things. And um, they're part of our development team on that. So that'll be um, co-announced into, into CIDA Air as we actually, you know, formulate what level the company is going to look at. But, you know, sales marketing and part of our development team is really where the FIS team fits in CIDA Air. Great. Thanks, Gary. Uh, well, it looks like we're a little bit over time. So I'm going to leave a couple minutes for you to wrap things up. Any comments? We're heading into a new month. It's Labor Day weekend. Uh, any parting comments before we wrap up? Yes, um, you know this. Uh, you know these holiday weekends always sort of catch catch me off guard. So, um, yeah, everybody, you know, we have a lot of things planned for after the weekend. That you know, our teams are working in all the areas. Um, as I say, um, Natalia will be uh, speaking on Thursday at a very uh, actually, I think she's keynote speaking at this one, a very prestigious conference. She'll have some interesting new pieces to talk about with regard to our CARES project. Um, and I, I I won't say anything about it until she's able to make her announcements there. But um, I will be traveling Monday um, to Canada. There's a conference up there and I've got I had a lot of kids floating around up there, so it'll be good to get back uh, you know, back to Vancouver, and uh, at least for a few days anyway. So um, everybody, you know, enjoy the weekend. We're going to really try to try to provide as much information about these areas as we can, uh, both from the point of view of telling you what we're doing, but also telling the world what we're doing because these are really important areas and you know the more information we can provide the more you know people we can influence by what we're doing at the end of the day you know we're we're all about safety and security and you know that's that's our mission thanks Gary great appreciate your time thanks everybody that attended we will have a replay available uh on website here in the next 30 minutes uh, and post on our social media as well. Everybody have a great weekend. Gary, take care. See you next take week. Bye-bye, y'all.